Today, we're going to be talking about custom product pages, and I'm going to show one, what they are, two, how to use them, three, how to set them up. We're gonna log into App Store Connect and do that. And we're also going to look at strategies and my favorite, how to analyze competitors and learn from them because that's really the easiest way to go about doing really anything on the App Store. There's a big problem with discovery on the App Store. After you spent all this effort, worrying about people getting to your app store page. You don't really have a good way of showing the user what they really, really want. That's where custom product pages come to the rescue. They're the secret weapon. You now have the option or the ability to show the user exactly what your app can do for them. Why are CPPs a must for paid campaigns? And this is really easy. They increase your conversion. In a world where you pay for every single impression, Higher conversion means lower cost of acquisition. So you can drastically increase the number of downloads you're getting from the same amount of money spent. There have been a lot of uh, different types of research on what works in which categories. Even Apple puts out some numbers, but even numbers that I've seen are all in the double digit improvements. Why wouldn't you do it? Again, it's free and it doesn't take that long to do. It's also a good way to test what users actually want. So you can have different custom product pages and swap them between keywords until you know what works. And because with ads, you get results really, really, really fast, you can then take that and apply it to organic. But then iOS 26 made it a must also for organic. And the reason is exactly the same, minus the money. You have a better chance of turning a page view into a download and you're gonna be working really hard to get those page views. So if you can do this and get even more downloads out of all the effort you already put in, it's kind of a win, right? It also expands your target audience. It means that you can cater to more people. Beyond the 10 screenshots you have, you can now have additional custom product pages for additional use cases. So now you can have more downloads from more users. and it gives you the ability to go into very small niches that are much easier to compete in. But if you target them with your main screenshots, you're kind of wasting a potential opportunity. So let's talk about CPP strategies. Why do you need a custom product page? Am I gonna change the colors of my screenshots? And the answer is no, that's not an A-B test. What we're trying to do is we're trying to cater your screenshots to the search that comes in. For example, if someone is looking for basketball tickets, we want to have a set of screenshots that shows why the app is perfect for basketball tickets. And there we can even dig a little bit deeper. You can customize now a whole set of screenshots for Knicks fans. So if I'm looking for Knicks tickets, which is a search that I can run on the App Store, I will see screenshots that only have tickets about Knicks games. And to me, that means that this is exactly what I want. The odds of me not downloading the app are becoming really, really small. So all the effort you put in or all the marketing spend that you put in are gonna be much more worth it. So if you're reading your reviews and you're watching your demographics, you can easily understand who's using your product. And based on that, you can customize the pages for them. Beyond customizing specifically for a group, what I also think makes a lot more sense is to also highlight the right features for that group. So not only showcase basketball tickets, but show why your app will give the best features for basketball tickets. My way of learning, as with pretty much everything, is learning from the competition. And the reason why, the competition proudly iterated over this, especially if it has to do with ads, anything that has to do with money usually gets a little bit more love or a lot more love, depends on what category you're in. And so learning from them is really essential because you can see what they're targeting, how they group their users and what they're trying to go after. Custom product pages are kind of new and even in the world of uh, Apple ads, they have not really been working with Apple ads for that long. They were always kind of a standalone thing. So it's possible that in your category, you're not gonna have many opportunities to find competitors who do this. But from what I've seen, and I wrote about this and published some data on this a few weeks ago of the top apps, 83%, I believe, were using custom product pages. So the reality is there's at least one or two or three apps out there that you can learn from, and you should. It's very easy and very straightforward. Let me show you what I mean. I looked up Audible. Audible is one of the highest earning apps in the US. Their trend is through the roof. If you've been following my newsletter, you know that I write about them all the time. They're just continuing to make more and more and more money. And you say, well, Audible is from a big company and that's why they're making money. And that's probably true. They have a lot of ads, but on the app store, they also take the time to optimize their conversion. And that's really the key here. Whether the company is big or small is irrelevant for, the reason, for what we're trying to do here. We're trying to analyze their strategy. And that's really where it gets cool. So um, 
This is the new app intelligence from AppFigures. It's only available in our Grow Premium plans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, there, there's a lot of information here, but I'm going to look specifically at the product pages. Audible has 13 custom product pages. You can have a maximum of 35 and they're using 13. They started about two years ago. They seem to be updating them if the last one was updated in June. And now what I do is I look through them and I try to understand what is the essence of what's going on here. So listen for the thrill, immerse yourself in action and adventure. Okay, so they're aiming for action adventure, uh, Audible Originals, so the features that would make this relevant for action and adventure, pursue the unknown, gear up for great hits, and face your fears. Okay, so most of this is really targeting action adventure, the thrill, um, really the language here is very, very specific. If I'm coming from action books or thrillers or something like that, and I get to see this, in my mind, this is exactly what I want. I don't see anything else. I don't see uh, novels. I don't see romance. I don't see really anything else or educational books, which I probably don't care about because I looked for action books or thriller books or something like that. But then it changes because if I look for something else, what is this romance and fantasy? I get this, the colors are a little bit different, but if you notice the the entire layout is kind of exactly the same. The same person thought about this or the same team, but they swapped out the intent. Oh, podcasts, okay, there we go. So another type of user is interested in podcasts and not in books. And that's what we're aiming for. And you can see these are the keywords that we saw these custom product pages being used in. And this is coming from Apple Ads again because organic is not there yet. Once organic also works, we'll also show those keywords in here. But Audible is running campaigns with the word podcast and podcast and pod space cast and BBC podcast and free podcast and all of those lead to this page. So if I'm looking for a podcast, I'm not getting romance and fantasy. I'm not getting whatever this is, more fantasy. Uh, I'm not getting audiobooks and Audible originals. I'm not seeing these celebrities. I am seeing exactly what I want, which is podcasts. That's the key to this. So now we understand what Audible is trying to do. We built an AI agent that goes and does exactly what I just did. So it analyzes every single screenshot in every single custom product page, and then thinks about how do they all combine together what is the strategy of Audible when it comes to custom product pages? The AI told me that Audible's custom product pages are being used as segmented acquisition funnel. Each page targets a specific audience or content intent, which makes sense. Podcast fans, we just saw those. Celebrities, we saw those. Audiobooks, bestsellers, we saw those. Uh, Self-help was probably down and I just didn't scroll. Pragmatic commuters, we also saw, we also saw fantasy and romance. Uh, an action and thriller, but the branding is consistent. That's kind of the idea. And that's that's an interesting part of this that I don't know if I would even look at if the AI didn't tell me. The branding is consistent, so you know exactly what's happening. And if you see it in any other context, it's gonna feel familiar. And they all lead to the same subscription offering, which is what Audible is trying to do. They're not segmenting their pricing, they're segmenting the how they get you to the pricing which is really, really cool. Let's create a custom product page. So I opened up App Store Connect. This is the App Figures app, and we're gonna add a custom product page. To make a custom product page is really straightforward. Log into App Store Connect, find your app, go into custom product pages right here on the left, and then you'll be presented with this. But click plus, let's give it a name, live streaming, and we're gonna create a new page. I don't wanna copy it. Now we have a few options. Option number one is those keywords. Those keywords are the keywords that I have in the keyword list for the App Figures app in English in the US. That's it. So even though App Figures is using the localization tip that I share with everyone to target different types of use cases for the app, app intelligence and review monitoring uh, and analytics and subscriptions, I can't see any of those. Also, I can't see anything that is from the name or the subtitle, the places that are the most important. So what do we do? We'll get to that in a moment. But on the technical side, this is what we have to do. I made some screenshots, so we're gonna drag all of these. I have me a custom product page. So if let's say I want to attach this to the keyword monitor, if anyone finds me through monitor, they will find this custom product page subscription. Let's say it's the same. Now, these keywords have nothing to do with this because we have a problem. This is a big problem. Apple not bringing in the name or the subtitle into here is gonna ruin everything, but it's not really gonna ruin everything. So we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. That's next on my list. When you're done with this, you hit save, and that's pretty much it. 
that's going to take you to Apple approving this because Apple needs to approve everything. I have not heard of a single rejection for a custom product page that wasn't just an egregious way of going against screenshots. So if you do everything normally like you would for your app, you're not going to get rejected. These get approved very, very quickly, um, not like apps. So that's it. You save and you're good to go. And that's how easy it is to create a custom product page. One thing that I would highly recommend doing is if you don't have any new screenshots and you don't have time to make them, but you already have, let's say, four or five or six or seven screenshots that target specific parts of your app, let's say you have four or five features, use a custom product page and shuffle the screenshots so the use case that, that is attached to the keyword is the first screenshot or the second screenshot, depends on how you do your screenshots. And that's uh, the poor man's way of taking advantage of custom product pages before actually spending the time in whatever graphics editor of your choice or AI or whatever to make new screenshots. But you can go and you can do that right now, probably in less than 30 minutes. If the keywords are coming only from the keyword list, what do you do? You can't take the main keywords that you have from the name and duplicate them into the keyword list because we know that's awful and that's a horrible sin. That has not changed. You can't take keywords from the screenshots because Apple doesn't index them. So I thought about two different ways to do this. Uh, my first way of doing this is to use custom product pages for long tail keywords. So instead of targeting your main keyword, have your default product page cater to the main keyword and then all of the long tail keywords run them with custom product pages. So your main feature, just like what we saw with Peloton, running is probably their biggest use case. Make that your default product page. Then all of the long tail keywords, which you're likely putting in the keyword list already, those use custom product pages. There's a lot of trial and error that I think would have to come in here and we have to wait for Apple to index those keywords. So it may not happen overnight, but that's one strategy of doing this. The other is use Apple ads with custom product pages and try to figure out which of the use cases are working the best, meaning which keyword with product page works the best, and then move that keyword into the keyword list on your organic side after you finished experimenting with Apple ads just because they're faster, and then have that in the keyword list and tie the custom product page to it. If it's in your name, I wouldn't do it, but if it's in your subtitle, it's probably okay. If it's in your name, that should be your default product page. And that's really where this becomes a little bit more tricky just because they focused it on the keyword list. This might change. I don't know. We're seeing really the beginning. We're in version pre-1 because iOS 26 is not exactly out yet. Hopefully this will expand beyond. But those are the two strategies that I would use right now. That's it for me. And I will see you in the next one.